We're taking a look at a surprising trend among a number of top businesses and global leaders, unexpected resignations. Just last week, the CEO of H&M, Helena Helmerson, rocked the fashion world and the company's stock prices when she abruptly announced she was stepping down. The move comes as H&M reported lower sales and earnings that missed analyst expectations. Helmerson, who has spent 26 years at the company, including four years as CEO, cited a lack of energy for the demanding role. Her resignation is part of a larger potential trend in leadership turnover from Roz Brewer of Walgreens and Bumble's Whitney Wolf Hurd leaving their CEO jobs last fall. And remember the resignations of Scottish First Minister Nicola Sturgeon and New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern of the world stage. Here to discuss is Forbes Women Editor Maggie McGrath and Vice Chair of the Forbes and Know Your Valley 3050 Summit, Huma Abedin. She's also an MSNBC contributor and co-host of Morning Mika. So Maggie, your team at Forbes Women has been reporting about female CEOs and how they tend to receive mm, more pressure, more blame from shareholders, peers, and media when their companies are going through a crisis. What do you make of this latest res resignation at H&M and what it says about the larger gender dynamics in the C-suite? Well, Mika, it is always concerning when we have a female CEO step down and get replaced by a male CEO, which is what happened at H&M, because, of course, women are so underrepresented in the C-suites of the world's largest companies. But to get to those gender dynamics that you alluded to, we know from research that women are 50 percent more likely to be named the CEO of a company in crisis than a company not in crisis. So they're getting tapped to lead during times of trouble. That's a vote of confidence, perhaps. But we also know from other research that women are more likely to get the blame for their company's troubles than their male counterparts are. Women get the blame 80% of the time. Men get the blame 31% of the time. What's interesting in the case of the H&M CEO transition here is that a lot of the reports, as you did note, say that H&M sales are down January, December, sales were down 4% year over year, so there are some financial troubles here. But Helmerson also took the helm of the company in January 2020. She is not exaggerating when she says that she has had a very challenging set of market environment conditions to navigate as CEO. She said in a press conference that she doesn't quite have the energy to continue leading. And that is something that we have heard from those other leaders mm. who have stepped down in the last year. So my big question is, what are the conditions that America's corporate boards and other C-suites are putting in place to allow female leaders to succeed? Because I think ultimately what we want to see are sustainable long-term tenures. Yeah, and I also wonder if you could take a look at how many male CEOs that leave their jobs and actually get better jobs. Because I have, I, I, in my career, I've seen so many men get fired and manage up higher. And, and I don't, and women don't, but that's just my anecdotal experience. Huma, it's not all bad news. Take, for example, Joanna Garrity, who was recently named CEO of JetBlue. Uh, becoming the first woman to lead a major U.S. airline carrier. Uh, you tell know, us about I do. Her. I do. Well, I think it's important for us to champion the firsts and, you know, the positive changes that are happening with women leaders at the top, because, you know, we all say representation matters. It's important for young uh, women to see that. And she is the first um, uh, 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 woman uh, to run a major U.S. airline. There have been other countries, other airlines that have done that. And, you know, uh, um, Maggie was just referring to what we call the glass cliff, which is where women are given jobs at the top when the country, uh, the company is in crisis or there's uh, there's trouble. But she has real experience. She has two decades uh, at JetBlue. There's this talk of a, a merger with Spirit Airlines that's complicated. And one of the things that we need to keep reminding people is women with experience can make a change, can make difference. I think having um, women who serve, uh, more women to serve on the boards, uh, uh, because they're the ones who have to make the decisions about dismissing uh, some of these leaders. But I think it's, it's great and it's exciting news. I look forward to see what uh, she does at the helm.